for avant guard. And if he's confident in the matchup, I wouldn't even mind blind picking it here. I think getting this type of champion would be very good for him. Now, Legacy first picked the Rise, they banned it away again here. It means we're gonna have much less uh, support targeting. Uh, Nada was fine anyway on Leona, so we wanna see what else is out here. Yeah, Kha'Zix actually receiving a ban as well. I guess both Carbon and Andy Zora have had good games of Kha'Zix, but I believe just, that's the jungle that's won both our games so far. He'll just play Rengar. I don't know why they, it, it, unless I think Zora can play it. That's the thing, is unless I think Zora's gonna play Rengar here, I don't see the purpose of a Kha'Zix ban. I thought Carbon's Rengar was fine last game despite the loss. I don't think you'd tilt on that at all. Chandra is an interesting ban, but they're actually gonna pick Tristana first, and that's gonna give Thresh over to Aegium. Carbon Ooh. immediately hovers that one, and that's likely to pick up here, and then Rengar's open as well. They could pick it. Uh, nothing too particularly open as well. Lucian, yeah. I guess, but I mean, that's pretty standard into Trist at this point. Right, well, Cardin's been, generally speaking, playing Corky more than Lucian anyway himself. Like, Lucian was only contested because Veritas wanted it, but now that he doesn't, who cares? Yeah, so Thresh, I think it's going to be an Alistair against him. Thresh, Alistair is not a lane I've seen very much because we haven't gotten to see much Alistair support overall because he kept being banned as a top laner. Um, it's just what I expected to see not a play. I mean, both these guys are going to be able to make openings. The difference, though, is that Legacy are already setting up for a better early game. And early game has been the name of the game for pretty much all of these series so far, where uh, getting to do things in the first 15 minutes tends to transition into a win. So I'm not even sure I'm in love with the Hustana overall. Yeah, and I like that they've got the playmaking champions on their shot callers once again. Yeah. Ejim and Carbon are going to be going back in on really, comf really comfort picks and champions that they can make a lot of plays with. I would like to see choose on something, again, not quite as passive. And for me, that was the biggest difference. The mid lane has just looked completely different in game one. Like game one, it was all about Choo Choo's. I think game two was all about Kensti. So we're in yep. game three now. Who knows what's going to happen? Well, here's the funny thing is, you saw did this last time he picked Jarvan. He actually banned Kha'Zix when he wanted to play Jarvan. I feel like it's a jungle counter pick. He doesn't want to face, even though you can expect the Rengar regardless, but it's his choice here. Um, this is already set up for a very good comp. Kensti could go for an Orianna here and play that AOE sort of Wombo style. Tristana's a good cleanup champion here. They could go for that. Alistair fits in the comp as well. So heck, Avant Guard are really set up for that type of team if they want to go for it. But they'd have to get out of the early game to make that work here. I wonder if Orianna is something that Legacy are considering actually as well. They have Rengar Orianna also. And I don't, want, I don't know what else Kensti really has going for him if they win the Twist of Bayman and Syndra Band, which he does play also. Okay, so the Orianna steal is interesting for a couple of reasons. One, it, it steals away the likely mid laner Kensu is going to play. But the other thing is, Orianna is actually a champion who relies on her team to make plays. She's not an individualist champion like Zed is, like Ari can be. Um, and so it, it still puts Choo Choo's a little bit out of his element. I know he can play Orianna, but it's not his innate play style, which is yeah. just a slight nerf to him as a player. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, a big assassin. Yasuo was also, I think, available there as well. From memory, Kensi does not play Fizz. There's one Fizz player in this top four, if I recall correctly. And that's Swiver from the Chiefs. And unfortunately, they had their loss yesterday against Legacy. So, uh -huh. Caitlyn's interesting to me also. I guess Carter's just like, I just really want to play safe against this Tristana, man. Yeah, I actually would have liked to see Jinx come out, actually. Because Orianna, I think, is a great with Jinx champion. And you could have gone for Riven top lane, just set up an AoE Wombo comp. Um, I actually would also prefer to see Zareth over Ari here. I don't love this hover, but uh, it does give more texture to Avant Guard's lineup. It's still a good AoE team. You still got a good setup for Rumble, but you had a very different setup. Oh, wow. no, okay, this is cool. This is cool. I do like this, actually. This is still very strong. More Man. AoE Wombo combo, more team fight, more CC. This is good. Yasuo yeah, so Alistar, man. And I guess with Truth deciding to try and steal away the Ari, that opens up Yasuo. Yeah, I actually forgot that Zareth was open. Oh, oh. my goodness, the Nah does come out, though. And Taliwaka, he's been so proficient on this champion. He, I love how you described it, actually, Freak. Yeah. He's just a tank. Yeah. Just treat it like you're always going to be Mega Knight when you need to be. Yeah, and, and, and that's your goal here. I mean, anytime you take damage, it's not like it's the Graves passive where, like, okay, if you're taking damage, it stacks up. It's like, no, no, no. Every time you take damage, you get more. So if you're getting hit by, like, a Rumble Equalizer or Flame Spitter with Leandris, you're just going to be Mega Knight immediately, and, and you build tanking to go for it. The only difficulty I see here with Legacy is their damage output is low. Again, part of the reason I like Jinx is she provides a lot more damage than someone like Caitlyn here. I don't think she's under that much threat anyway in the first place. Uh, yeah, so we can try to reach, but I don't think she's okay here. And so the follow-up, I don't know if it's here. Legacy can start fights really, really, really well off Rengar, Orianna, and Nar. But I don't know if Caitlyn's the right kind of cleanup. 
Meanwhile, Avant-Garde, great team fighting team, and they can fall back on Yasuo's split push while Tristana and Rengar just wave clear. Yeah, and right. I actually love, I love the Yasuo effect. Rumble. Yeah. Yeah. I love the Yasuo effect. It's funny because both of the mid laners on this team are incredibly proficient Yasuo players. And again, there's no Fizz players. Actually, no, I lied. There's one Fizz player between these two teams. It's Carbon. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm right. serious. He's a jungle yeah. Fizz player. Yeah. Loves it. But wasn't open here. They saw the pick and like, yeah, Orient Yasuo. Love it. I'm happily playing that matchup all day, every day as Yasuo. And again, there's kind of a standoff where in the draft, if any of the mid laners kind of pull the trigger where they can not wear a, like, Yasuo is just a good pick, they're just like, yep, we're going in. Yasuo time. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to work pretty well, even though it's, it's uh, you know, it, it works, again, in, in the case of this team comp. I think there's a lot of outs with this champion as well. As soon as you can get out of lane with Yasuo, he works in so many different situations that it's a strong overall pick and works in so many different places here. So, champ select-wise, I feel like I give the edge here to Avant-Garde. I think for the second time in a row, they've outpicked um, their opponents, and I think they've got a lot more to fall back on. But let's see if they can do it in the best of five. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. Avant-Garde are now tied with Legacy. One game apiece here in this best of five. We're in game three. Avant-Garde on the blue side. Legacy over on the red. And some really cool stuff here for both these teams. And this is much more in line with game one for me, Freak, in terms of composition. I agree with you that Avant have outpicked them slightly, but we've got much more mid-game focus. Everyone's going to be brawling running into each other. That should make yeah. for a much less one-sided game. And also, we keep in mind, Tallywack is a player who's been very good at keeping down rumbles in lane. I actually want to see a two-on-two -two here for Legacy pretty badly. Revan Guard, I want to see him lane swap. Tallywacker, when he played Riven, absolutely demolished Swiper <clears throat> when that man played Rumble. It was obnoxious. It was horrifying. Now he's on Nar, who's also a very good laner, and I think Tallywacker can repeat that performance if he gets a one-on-one. -on -one. And that's the thing I actually really like about Nar. He's not just this big tank, as you said, that you pretty much, he's, ta he's a tank when you need him to be in the team yeah. fights, but he's a lane bully as well in his mini now form, so really cool to see just now. Such a versatile, very difficult to play against top laner, but hey, we are doing something a little bit cheesy it's here. It's set up for him. They have enough Trinket Wars to spot the movements. They had Yasuo spot them come in. And now they can flick this blue up. There's no way Legacy sees this. Yeah, no. That's just, this is a very creative invasion. Even Tally's actually just hitting his recall button. And we should see a late Once invasion. Once they see Oriana, they go for this. Tally moves out. Yep, they're going to start this blue. And here we come. No, not yet. Oh, they'll wait for the buff to spawn. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They want to late invade here. This is kind of what Carbon actually did in the last game on Rengar, invading that buff with Ejim with a great amount of pressure. Yeah. This is 5v3. Yeah, here's the flank as well coming through. Oriana's already in lane, and AV are like, hey guys, how are you? Cardred, he's going to get into Flames with it. Flashes out towards his turret, so oh. he's okay there. I'm actually really sad for Borky that he started Flame Spitter. If you had Electro Harpoons, they could have guaranteed one of these kills here. Robin. They get a blue steel and they get a flash burn, but I feel like they could have gotten more. But yeah. still, I mean, great start for Avant Guard. Yeah, and that's exactly what they want. Going to now try and three buff Carbon here. Cook does land oh. on Anata, actually. Cardred, little low from the early level one. Does not have his flash, but able to bully in. They really have to bully. We are actually in standard lanes, I think, for the first time in this series so far. And Cardra is going to have to play very well in this, Caitlyn, to bully this Trist. It's good for Legacy, but the problem is Cardra's going to be running out of health pretty quickly. He's already chugged his only potion. He took another explosive shot to the face here. Veritas has plenty to stay and still to come in with an Alistair extra potion and all that. Yeah. I just wonder how much is Caitlyn just being a good lane bully is going to tip this matchup. Great start. Yeah, not against level two. Great hook up by Ejim. Plays him oh, in the turret as well. A little too much tower damage. Forcing the exhaust out. Exhaust trades there as well. As Ejim does use that onto Veritas. That was really fortunate for Legacy. Level two came in for Ejim as that fight started to allow him to hook Flay and make Nada lose a whole bunch of health. So suddenly, it's uh, equal in summoner spells. Legacy just barely squeaking in the advantages they need to keep up in this lane. The cards are going to continue trying and bully. And again, Eric Jimmers does want to get aggressive on this thresh if he can. Not a quite low from all that poke. Those headshots coming in nicely. So bottom line developing well, but Varus is keeping up with DS so far. Good hook actually. Finds it. There's a great double play. Not only headshots him away. Egan McDeed, one more auto attack. First blood to Egan. Wow, Nada had taken so many hooks. Absolutely beautiful. Egan got Thresh. I was so surprised Legacy were banning the champion earlier on because I felt like you give him the champion at any point in champ select and Legacy's ability to win is amazing. You're seeing it right here. What a good start in the duo lane. Good start indeed here is Kinsey getting bullied back a little bit in the early levels. To be expected here against Orianna. So Choose does have a little CS lead here in the mid lane as we start things off. But Yasuo, one of those champions that really just wants to farm as much as possible. 
kind of an even or better sort of champion in lane. Right, right, exactly. And that's what he's going to look for here in this one. Kensi, though, is being pushed in, and they know there's actually a lot of gank pressure available from Jarva. They're hoping that the wards that have come down for Choo Choo's are going to be enough to keep them alive against these ganks. But Jarva and Yasuo can definitely do meaningful damage against Orianna. Yeah, it's just up to Kensi to kind of last hit effectively on the turret with his E and the auto attack cancels. And again, a competent Yasuo player here, so should have no trouble. And again, keeping up nicely here with about a 6 CS difference. So we'd have probably just a farm fest in that mid lane. Tally, meanwhile, in the top lane. Booing a little bit so far. Carbon's actually rotated up here in towards the top. He's going to try and set up a gank. Tally's actually near Mega now as well, but looks like Carbon does want to give it up here. Tally's pushed the lane a little too far. He's hoping to see if someone can push it out. I think he was baiting a counter gank with the way he was moving up. Uh, saying, okay, Jarwin, you like a little bit of heal, bought your first items, now you might look for a gank. Are you going to show up? No, no, you're not. Okay, no big deal. So, Taliwaka is building a plus 10 CS lead. That's very good for him. Probably going to keep growing for here. Uh, from here on out, I should say. Yeah, and back to Megan. I'm going to shove the minions into the turret. Porky will flame spit what he can. And actually, Azor has found his way himself in a very creative spot. You're actually counter jungling the wolves. Must have the read that Carbon's up towards yeah. the top side. Carbon's taking way too long up here. They're, like, you can't. Like, I know he has full ferocity, so there's always the chance to land the root and deal the damage. But there's no way Porky extends that far. He's going to last hit with Electro Harpoons. Nice knockout. Juju just does get knocked up. And further damage will come through. Don't dive, though. Choose flashes a little late, but he knew he was safe at that time. There was actually a pink ward that I thought would spot Yazora that Avant plays nice and defensively just wide of their mid lane. But instead, they're going to just get aggressive here. Knockup doesn't land there for Kensti. And Choo just can't defend this turret. EQ flash would actually give him the kill. Kensti could flash EQ and get the kill afterwards. So. Oh, sorry. That's Avant's pink ward that I saw. That would be why. That would explain uh, yeah. it. And that's some really nice warding and great movement from Yazora as well to get beautiful pressure onto that mid lane. So Carbon went top lane, Yazoro burned a flash and took a one or two camps counter jungling. Significantly better play here by this Jarvan so far. And that's a good thing for Avant Garde. They needed some help because that bot lane started out badly and so did the top lane. Yep. And as you can see, a 10 CS lead all mounting to about 15 now for Kadrid. So doing well with the Caitlyn, but Carbon is going to check out something. In fact, Kensi's rotating down to the bottom, does have his ultimate now as well. Carbon will find Kensi though. He's gonna meet this Rango. The road might cost him. Here. Chuju's gonna move it. Does have his ult but maybe not enough mana. Who's gonna auto attack it? That Q's group, but that's a good flash there. Carbon actually gonna flash after Kensi though as well. And the damage oh. did a good knock up there from Yazora. And there's not enough left, but maybe Yazora's gonna get a beautiful reset of the brush there by Carbon. Comes in with the ferocity. Now with the ball on top of him, Yazora's forced to flash as well. Tally's actually come down as well. Egypt comes in, wants to land it through Carbon, but he can't hook further. And a lot of creativity there from Legacy, but no dice on the kill. That was twice in a row. Carbon used five ferocity on a Q instead of a root. In either case, if he throws out ferocity E, he gets the kill. I am surprised by those misplays by Carbon. He misjudged his damage and misjudged the need for crowd control. It still, it still, of course, gives him the dragon. It was a great gank overall, but it could have been more. Yeah, both top liners actually used their teleports there as well. Pocky was actually pulling shoes a little bit. He's quite low after that exchange in the mid lane, but he'll just clear out his creeps and be happy. They want to go in. Good pulverize actually going to Carter and Veritas. We'll get aggressive. That's going to force the exhaust out Now, Egypt wants to come through, probably looking for a flay here. Nardo, though, blocking nicely. Good hook, though. He actually could be in trouble. Could this ass, though, as he flays back, but not quite enough damage. Carbon is so low in his own jungle. Looks like he popped his W, donating the blue buff to Choo Choo's. There he is. He's safe now. Yep, he's okay. Just going to chill out. Just, you know, hang out with his zero trophy stacks and move on from there. Now, interesting to note, apparently Caitlyn traps take too long to arm. Uh, you can't set them up with just death sentence. They would require like, really, really good play afterwards to make that work. But the more you know. Well, there we go. The card are going to continue farming up here. Although Veritas actually jumped ahead in CS. I guess due to the dragon that uh, Legacy tried to take quite early. So yeah. that might cause some problems here in the bottom lane. Veritas is having quite a lot of room, more than I think he expected to get in this 2v2. Yeah, I'm surprised he's been able to equalize the CS here. But as he levels up, his range gets better. The power of explosive shot goes up as well. And it just became a little bit nicer for him. Also, he's got a bit of an item lead because of awkward recall timings. That pickaxe really, really helps him in this lane. He can last hit at um, significantly longer windows. Anytime you're fighting in the bottom lane in a two-on-two, -two, you try to hit your opponent when he goes for CS, right? That's, that's when you look for it because you know he can't fight you back. When you've got like 110 attack damage, your window for last hitting is really long. And it requires your opponent to be constantly looking, oh, can I hit you now? Can I hit you now? And if they ever go for an auto, then you have the easy window, and you just hit it, and you walk away, and nothing ever happens to you. So as attack damage goes up, your chance of getting harassed goes down. Yeah, let's just see. Gonna farm it up with the blue buff on Ariana. 
Congratulations. Look at Comfy here. Double the rush for Kondra's curious as well, but I guess he just wants to make sure he can keep in this link. Can't see him in time. Still down 10 CS, but he'll see us. Most of his creeps, if not all of them, under this tower. There's his first one. Oh, we'll a couple of Yasuo mechanics here as well. Yep, Kansi's yeah. on top of it. Yeah, he's good to go on this one, unless his E stacks up. It's even easier to last hit, so oh, he's yeah. fine. Kind of like a relic. It's very easy to last hit with a champion like Yasuo. But even easier, you didn't have to use mana. Yeah, true. I'm hoping for Cardrid's sake, he's got enough gold for a BF sword. Mm, there's he, Boots. There's okay, a BF sword. Yeah, he had, cool. he had Boots, boots Dorans. That was like a little bit less expensive than a pickaxe, so I knew his recall was going to be uh, differently timed. So he's got a, a pretty small window where he's going to have BF sword advantage, but that can get answered pretty quickly. Carbon finally finds that pink ward as well. Throws out an E. He's already just out of it. Two's actually with his ult and full mana and health. With his uh, Thane's almost finished with both the Fiendish Codex and the Chalice so This is a decent time now for Legacy to potentially get aggressive, but not the objective fight around Carbon. Never mind, gonna go in on Kenzie, who's dashing around the minions, will die to Chuchu, so Yuzora jumping on top. Can he get the kill? Not going in, misses the ball for us, but Yuzora will get that next kill. Oh. Do a headbutt as well away. Wow. Uh -oh. And the exhaust means more can happen. But Nas here as well. Equalizer just missing on the truce. And now Talibaki doesn't have enough rage, but he's going to fight Porky here. Just popping into that hyper. Oriana going to help him out. Speeds him up as well. But it's 1v3 right now for Tally. Finds another boomerang. Good bounce forward. We'll get more vision. Hyper going to come in as well. Now Mega now will be on the way. Sin misses that neck. Boomerang. Oh, that's hit Porky again. And a good side comes in. Nada oh. will rotate through. Mega now throws a house at Nada. And the, the room will not be enough for either top laner, unfortunately. Does buy a lot of time, though. This is going to be avant Guard forced to back away. No one around at all. The recalls are slow on top of that one. And Legacy, despite not getting a lot of kills for it, do get control of the mid turret. Very good fight for them. Really good boomerang control as well by Tallywack. It didn't miss a single catch despite chasing around corners. Such good knowledge of how to play Gnar. Yeah, just a fantastic collapse from Legacy in that mid lane to clean out that turret and get themselves roughly 2,000 gold in the lead. So nice play early on again. Legacy developing an early lead. We'll see what they can get done with this particular team. Cop. This is a, a nice start, but again, 2,000 gold, not a massive lead, even at 11 minutes. Not a massive lead, but as long as they can keep that money advantage, their life just stays easy. And I think they've got so much playmaking. I just, I'm a really big fan of the team. Oh, God. Oh, he's played. He's played. Yeah, good play. The box not quite up enough. Soon that enough, Buster I Shot saved say. him. Buster Shot saved him from getting boxed. That was really clutch. Yeah, Veritas has some Buster Shots in both game two and now this game as well. So again, no way around Shoshana. Card are going to ride in. Pulverize not quite enough in, not quite in time, but Veritas truly had to play. Very telegraphed with the Lantern there. Yeah, not a good instinct to pulverize that and try to get away before anything bad happened to him. Indeed, that was the case here, so life is good. Egypt, of course, had burned Flash for the chance at a hook. He didn't get it. Oh. Missed that one too. Yep. Trying to hope Nada would juke just a little to the right, but doing well. I love that every time his Moby Boots come back up, he's just running straight forward to yep. Shoshana. As soon as you stop to auto attack, you, you've lost so much distance that you're in flay range, basically. So you're going to continue CSing. Actually, developing a very nice lead here. Almost 20 CS ahead in this particular 2v2 lane. That's not what I expected at all with Caitlyn versus Trist. Oh, the cannon. The cannon's... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's actually still alive. Never mind. Oh, he might right. get it. Come on, Egypt. Egypt. Oh, scumbag. Cardrid. Don't let Egypt get that. <laughs> when he 15 gold instead of 45. Robbing his teammates. Cards are there. Just gonna harass back. You can see when when they do get time alone here, Caitlyn obviously is gonna win these trades early yeah. on. But the fact that Veritas is stabilizing CS here is really big. But Carbon and Chuchu's are rotating down his bottom. And we could see some submarine Oriana. Oh. Can he find it? Veritas knows there's someone around though. Carbon now is walking fast. He's like, nope, don't want any part of that. And the first Rengar ult from Carbon. Misses a little bit, you have to say. Yeah. Not what he wanted at all. It's a late ult, too. It's 13 minutes in. I believe he was part of, a, of an earlier fight, maybe, but that one certainly did not work. Can't see nice trades there with Choo Choo's, but Oriana will hold fast. Very skill intensive, this particular matchup. Although, obviously, Oriana favored in the early stages. Avant, though, we're going to look for this dragon. We don't have a Rengar up. We've got everything else. TP's up for both top lines. Tally comes in immediately. Rumble's going to join in as well. Poke there coming through. Now, Tally and Mega now form. Going to look. Hook does find it's another, but they don't want to go in on that particular one. Mini now is now back as well. And Legacy, I don't know if they can defend against this Rumble. Equalizer does pop in. Trying to hit three wave. members. Great move there. But it's very low. Two dudes just can't see. He's going to pick up that first kill. He gets grabbed though. He's going to go. Great triple play there. Coming up from Egypt. And Carmen flushes it out and gets that first kill. Beckham now down as well as Rumble will pick up that kill. Cardred forced to run away in a two for one trade in favor of Avon.
Two for in, in favor of Avant, but they have used a good number of their ultimates. Only the Yasuo ends up, and he's dead. So Avant can't really contest for this dragon. Veritas is going to be forced to jump away, and he even takes dragon damage while doing it. This is actually a legacy dragon. Potentially. Carbon actually already smited something. I guess they, yeah, they're going to uh, walk up the this dragon. Okay. So I think I guess, it's a smart move there yeah, as well. Both little, will little back too off. Risky. Okay, okay. So both will back off. Porky actually going for a tankier build. He's not going Sword Shoes. He actually just went for Seekers here. Could have bought Sword if he wanted to. Chose not to. So really uh, afraid of what Tally can do to him in the 1v1. So he delays his own damage output. Even though there's probably going to be another attempt for Dragon soon. Because he wants to survive the landing phase. He's kind of looking down as well as build 2 develops. Obviously the AD carry has got a bit of a way to go. He's got Avarice Blade with the pickaxe and Patrice. So he's going to like him move the static ship first before Infinity Edge. Uh, Athene's on Holy Grail up for Choo Choo's. And build's kind of developing as you said with Rumble. And now on the top lane as well. Tally just going very standard for him. And going very tanky on this Nah. For me though, uh, Kenzie's choice of going uh, critical close here is really curious. He's actually looking for a fast Infinity Edge. I mean, I assume so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so IE is just a, a great choice on both on Caitlyn, especially. I think it's it's the best starting item, to be honest. Um, Bloodthirster builds, I think, are a thing in the past in almost every single situation. There's very few cases where I think it's the right one to go for. Uh, meanwhile, it's just it's standard stuff for Veritas, right? Pickaxe just has some attack damage. You can last hit well. The laning phase time I talked about earlier, and then go for the fast static shift. So you can wave clear and just be a really good push threat. Mm -hmm. But yes, yeah, so is the one oh, yeah, so I was sorry. curious about. That's oh, okay. okay, there we go, yeah. Um, I personally really like IE second. Mm -hmm. I know not a lot of pros go for the 100% crit build, but... That was a wind wall, by the way. Oh, man. That ball did not go as far as you thought it would. No, it got blocked. Wind wall. Oh, man, you saw it. Gonna go in. Great equalizer on top as well. That is a absolute crap ton of damage. And Kenzie picks up a kill on the carbon land and will save Oh, wow. Oh, he sniped him with a boomerang. Wind wall, that he says. Yeah, and, and that was one cool yeah, well, it's interesting. I mean, he's saying he, saying that he doesn't want to go for the, uh, the split push sort of potential. Right? It, it is a better dueling item to go for Blade of the Ruin King. Naive second says, look, I'm going to have gigantic AOE Qs, and my, even my static shift damage is going to be super high. And because he's picked into an Alistair, Jarvan, and Rumble team, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's definitely, one, again, we talk about mid game all the time in games, mm -hmm. it seems like. And with the way AV's comp work, with Big Rumble, I mean, Trist is kind of, a, we've called it an insurance policy. Yeah. I think that's pretty accurate here. But I think Kenzie just wants to make his 20, you know, the 25, 30 minute section of his team better. And that's what IE Second does feel on Yasuo. Right, right. Uh, yeah, so that's the goal here in this one. Yes, yeah, sorry for misremembering what champion you were going for. But uh, the difficulty, though, is the Till Card dude actually finishes his Infinity Edge. He's actually not very useful here. Legacy, thankfully, get to use that pick on Kenzie to turn it into Dragon anyway. Very fortunate for these guys, but well capitalized by Legacy. Healed up, went there before Kenzie could show up. Exactly the right play. Still a small lead there. Bok will actually equalize effectively. This is going to take that turret up now. Left it a thousand gold. Nada, though, he's going to get jumped on. Kenzie finds the knockup. Nada flashes out. Beautiful play there by Alistar. And he should be okay. A very tanky champion. Burn the ult, take no damage. Flash me when you have to, whatever, no big deal. So, well played in this case. So, here we go. 500 gold difference, Dragon off the table, which is actually pretty awkward for Porky here, who doesn't really get to be that great mid-game rumble for another six minutes, and six minutes of Taliwaka getting to push against him if he wants to. I have to say, I feel like Porky is struggling again here in the top lane. He's just... The way Legacy have played, he's just not been able to get to a dragon fight as Rumble and be super high impact. He's had a great equalizer with the Jarvan ultimate. When they he's had some good ones to bad ones, though. There yeah, was a fight in the mid lane where he actually just straight missed on Choo Choo's, who Reflex flashed anyway because he expected it to hit him, but it wasn't even on. Yeah. And that's a bit risky when you compare to how Tallywack as Rumble was earlier on, and Tallywack at winning his lane. I think arguably doing more in fights potentially as well. Um, the soul laners typically, to me, feel like they are a bit better for Legacy, but we're seeing that the dual lane is quite obviously going better for Avant Garde, despite the Alistair first blood. Uh, Cardred is losing now pretty significantly to Veritas, who's going to probably keep Spike ahead of him as soon as he finishes the first item. Yeah, Veritas, by the way. I'm glad you pointed it out. Yeah. Cardred has finished that IE, but no, uh, does have Brown Blitz, but no Berserker Greaves yet. And Berserker Greaves are a big deal on Caitlyn, who really does just want a bit more attacks because he doesn't have that much base stats wise as an AD character. He has long range carbon. Does miss the rip, but he jumped on anyway. Zora will slow him down, just kind of throws Q at his face. Ariana moving through as well, but. We'll be all right for now, but Veritas has impressed me in a standard lane. He's just pulled so far ahead against, what is, Caitlyn. Yeah, Caitlyn. 
The lane bully. I'll egg him. Oh, that is a trap, though. This is not good. Tallywack is going to be here right on top of him. Oh, comes in. Carter jumps in on top as well. The house just misses, but Carter's going to clean up that kill. Great Nara Osman there from Tallywacker as well. The box also goes through. Truju's a little lost. Oriana does pull maybe one and a half in. But Porky's going to get that next kill. Tally, though, he's taking so Rain much hook. damage. Now he's Mega Half. Mega now, sorry, Porky will go down to Carbon. He's already getting slowed by the Boomerang Blade, but a one for two trade there is advantage Legacy. Yeah, two for one for Legacy. They're going to trade turrets, though, because uh, Kensti stayed in the mid lane. So these are going to be equalized, but it's more minion waves that can be crushed. Tallywacky can hold mid, no big problem. Legacy, great job there. Yeah, and I think much needed gold there for Kadrick with those uh, assists in that particular team fight. And again, nice aggressive play here. Egypt and Tally coming up nicely. But uh, we don't really have something to fight for yet, and both teams are approaching some pretty key power points. Uh-oh. Kensi's in the wrong spot. He's surrounded here. Yeah, maybe stayed a little too long. I was like, hey, now nah, how you doing? Cover's like, hey, buddy, how you doing? No, no, no. Gonna try and save him. Good though, Paul Russ. Egypt are coming in with the flash. Kensi is already halted, I believe. Does get walloped into the ground there, but Egypt now caught out of position. House does come out, but just misses Kensi. He's got a knock up as well, so no chase there for Legacy. My gosh, Nada is just everywhere. His Alistair is pretty damn strong. He saved Kensti there. Got away to safety, nearly killed Carbon with it. So beautiful stuff on this one. Alistair Yasuo, man. You know all about that. I do. I do, in fact, know all about that. I'm sorry, Spawn, if you're listening. He, he, he experienced <laughs> me getting... Basically, I, was, I played a community game, for those of you not aware, and I, I played Yasuo on uh, Hexakill. And I basically got on top of this Alistar's back and started swinging my sword around his head. That was how I played. And yeah, it's as really, though you really were new new. As though I was new new, correct. It's and now... there was absolute zero chance that your opponents could live? Yes. Yes, there was. <sighs> Tally here in the top lane. It started, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Gonna clear out some minions in the top. Chuju's actually feels a tad behind here. I assume a rabbit on Zemcap yep. wants to be his build, but he's just not gonna hit the spike as nearly as quickly as Kensi looks like he's going to. He is a bit behind. Kensi's Yasuo is doing very, very well. Was slightly down earlier on, but he's come back quite nicely. But one thing that's been happening here is Kensi's been very much focused on his individual lane, whereas Chuju's has been trying to make roaming plays. In the bot lane, the roam play worked. That was nice. But Kensi stayed mid, got a turret for it. Chuju has tried to roam other times and missed out and actually not got anything for it. So Chuju's trying to make these plays. It's not always happening, though. So we talked about with Oriana. She requires teammates to make plays. Chuju's doesn't always have the teammates there or doesn't always roam at the right times to make those happen. Yeah, and again, Legacy have not found really much success with grouping as five members and trying to push down. That's what they love to do as a team. It's where they excel. Carbon, the will spot is already He's going to get altered, actually. Carbon looks to go in. Egypt wants to pop over the top. There's a great snare there coming through, and that should be killing this job. And he does pop his ultimate, but Card is going to pick up that kill. Blue buff does go over to Caitlyn as well, so a nice win there for Legacy. So blue team actually pings Baron, and I actually had the same thought, where I feel like Legacy could just go for the random risky Baron and hope no one checks it. <laughs> It wouldn't be that bad of an idea, but they go for the safer play, probably the smarter play. And uh, they're going to push top. And once again, Legacy doing an amazing job of when they get a pick, they get something for it. Last time it was bot lane, this time it's top lane. But this time around, there's nothing to answer for. I have to ask you though, Freak. We're getting like towards a, a big mid game point here. 22 minutes in, 25, 30 minutes is likely where a lot of these two team comps are going to start shining. But yeah, we're very close in this game. There's what, 2,000 gold ahead for Legacy, which is really nothing at this point in the game. Do you feel like late game is in any particular team's hands in, in this game, given the team composition? Um, so, so late game, I think I give to Avant Guard because they have really strong team fighting and they have the Kensi split push and they've got the Tristana insurance policy. So many good things are going there. Legacy, I said at the beginning, I'll say it again, I don't think they have very high damage output. So once Porky gets the Zonias, once Yazora gets some tank items, I don't see how they get rid of those champions. Now that said, also, at this second, I feel like Avant Guard are actually a bit stronger. They hit big power spikes. Leandris is done, Shiv is done, IE is done on both those AD carries here. Uh, the AD carries of Avant Guard, so surprised that they don't fight for this, but they just weren't there in time, I guess. Yeah, not quite in position, unfortunately. And that was looked like a very risky Baron for a Legacy. Good ball there by Chu. She's just spot about moving through the lane. Snare will be popped out there as Carbon's trying to get a bowler. Out onto some from AV, but we'll defend now. Caitlyn, thankfully, with good wave clips, although needs to finish that static ship if that's what he's going for to uh, make that a little easier. Yep. And you're just seeing that Caitlyn is trailing here in items kind of the whole time. And I don't think it's going to get any better. We're seeing repeatedly 
He's able to get far and better, but Yuzora in the wrong place at the wrong time again, and he gets rooted. Warning very aggressively there on the Baron, uses his ultimate, does not have his flash, and that's Taliwaka with a free kill, you have to think there. Now Baron could be considered in Legacy are going to go in. We saw a very sneaky Baron by them. Oh, what a bait. No, 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 I can check it. He's not going to be afraid of this. Oh, they do use the scrying orb as well. They know no one else is there, so they I'm not like, bait. nuh uh. And also, Chuchu's lost half his health bar right as he appeared on Rengar ulti. They're going to try for this. Yeah, Carbon's going to run in distance there for Taliwaka. He's running out of range, bounces over the wall. Can he throw a house? I can't see wind wall. Is up and does wall. He can try again, though, soon. Flash! Oh my so goodness, close. that was close. Carbon's got Carbon, him. He found a bit of brush, and now the ult's going to come down from Bogey. Can't see flash with that Carbon. Quite low, actually flashes out of the way. Oh no, he flashed with the Oriana ball on top of him. They have to re-engage him. Porky, they're going to get one kill. Now we'll get snared up there by the hook. Does watch out. But Kadra clean to that kill. Can't see. going to go back. He picks up Egypt. Kadra's so low. Can't see. Get the double. There's the triple kill. But Tally does pick him up. Now he's 2v1 <laughs> off. He got popped over the top. Does oh! bounce on the just in time. And a four for two trade there. For Avant. You've got to be so careful when you chase against a team with Rumble. They lined up for the Equalizer, and I just said, you've got IE Shiv done on Yasuo Tristana, you've got Leandri's done now on the Rumble. This is the a gigantic spike that is unmatched here by Legacy, and they walked right into it. Yeah, and that 2,000 gold lead is going to get shortened very swiftly here as that tier 2 dark tusk fall down. That just doesn't really matter at this point. We've hit all the power points. For Avant here, the Infinity Edge was done for Kansas Yasuo, but the Leandre was done, as you said, for Rumble. And we had Infinity Edge, Static Shiv, and a whole host more of items coming in, but we do have a replay freak. All right, so watch this battle. Even though it's a 5v4 with Yazora being dead, we can run this clip out and just watch this. It's, this is brutal. Watch this equalizer. It is so good. It catches everybody. Carter has to walk into it. This Shockwave as well. He went for the Command Protect on Carbon, but it was too low of a player. Legacy, though, going for the Baron Rush. They love the sneaky Barons, apparently. Everyone's popping over the wall. Looks like Egypt Death Sentence in. Moved Carbon over. Tally jumped over. And now Cardroid is coming in. And this is actually going down very quickly. The Equalizer they will find them. They have spotted them off. They're staying they can't for get it. anyone else in Carbon. Gets killed out. The Baron does go down. Yazora picks it up easily there. And now Egypt's going to go down. Cardroid in a whole host of trouble now. As Rumble with the double. In fact, might be a triple. No, Yazora picked up the other kill onto Egypt. Cardroid nowhere to go. Slows down Kensti. But I don't think he can escape this Tristana. It should be 4-0 and a Baron. There's one auto. Scrying on is very nice. nicely there by Veritas. And they did the right thing. Only Veritas chased that kill down. Getting rid of Caitlyn removes some wave clear. It was actually the right choice to remove that champion. As opposed to send Trist on the push right away. The rest of these guys should still be okay in trying to push it out. Like Choo Choo's can get dived here. Nada can easily run in and just head up Pulverize, so this is a turret kill. Yeah, Nada has ultimate still as well. Carbon will come back. It looks like Egypt is back as well. It's actually going to pop his ultimate. They're going to go very aggressive. Bolt is onto that Rengar, but they've got to make a play now. They're jumping to Nada, who's so tanky. Pop his ultimate! He got Veritas, but a great pop! Oh! Into the full man! Yes, I welcome it! There's a great three-man shockwave that McKenzie is chasing down Telly. Veritas is in the front lines going absolutely ham. There's three kills for zero. Another head up Pulverize. There for Nada, Egypt, he's trying to make the play. Veritas going back in, there's another kill, there's the other, they will complete the ace as well. Five kills for zero for Avant-Garde. And once again, 27 minutes in, Avant-Garde are suddenly inside the base. The risky Baron was punished and Avant-Garde are going for the win. This game is over, ladies and gentlemen. Avant-Garde looks like they will take a 2-1 to one lead up against Legacy. The, ne the third Nexus of his best of five will fall. And what a game, this series. This keeps getting better and better, Free. Good on them to check the Baron in time. The team fight come, it paid off. Kensti showed up very strong on this Yasuo. The bot lane was dominant in the 2v2, and it all transitioned beautifully. Great, great plays here by Avatar. And again, you kind of pointed it out in the draft where Chuch is a final Rihanna player. Yeah. But it's, it's not, he needs to be the one empowering himself when he's making these plays, and yeah. twice now when he's played a champion that he can't make plays on by himself by just diving in with Zed and going ham and trying to kill ADs. Just, it's not the same team. Yeah, and especially when Avant Guard are clearly playing these cohesive, looking for teamfight compositions, the best way to deal with that was the way Legacy dealt with it in game one. Split the team up, create pressure. Like, just think back to how ludicrous Choo Choo's versus Porky was in game one. He's like, I'm Zed, and Mundo's getting one shot. And you're like, man, life really sucks when your dedicated tank can't survive Zed. And 
they closed the game out before any important defensive items came through. That's the legacy we want to see. Of course, great bands by Avant Garde just to break that apart. Great picks by them as well, putting together a good comp that fights in these battles so well. In fact, to show those battles, we got one more replay we want to show you guys. You can pull that one up on the screen. The Avant Garde are absolutely great team fighters. Legacy opting into basically a 4v5 here. Just watch Nada. This is freaking ludicrous. Four-man knockup. Egypt actually wasn't quite caught in the uh, Yas ulti, but who cares? And there's just no way you're going to win this battle. You've got Caitlyn only now walking into the fight. Like, she's not doing any damage. And, and, and at this point now, it's too late. It's, it's you know, two guys at one-third health and Karjan by himself. He's not going to survive. Veritas, again, the insurance policy. What what makes Persona so good at this is the fact that you get resets off the early fights and you can keep picking up the kills at the very end of it all. Legacy are... <coughs> They, they looked better than game two, though. They put together a much better early game. Egypt's Thresh, still amazing. Got first blood. That was awesome. Really good stuff. But they're just they're playing the the rest of the game a little bit improperly. They're li they're limping into team fights against a rumble, things like this. They need to find that other split push. And they need to find that other solo, a true solo champion for Choo Choo's yeah. and play in the style they did in game one and Legacy or look a lot better. Avant Garde though, bounce back great from game one. They look angry, they look, well, I'm angry that they're like, they're going for stuff, right? They look aggressive, they're happy of course, and they're one game away from being the third Oceanic champion in three seasons. It is, so guys, it is match point now for Avant Garde. A 2-1 lead in his best of five series puts backs against the wall.